So, uh, this guy, Jonathan, you? Yes, me. Yeah, he wrote something, a screenplay. Are you called a screenplay? Screenplay. Yeah, a screenplay he wrote. And then he sent it to Ian. He found Ian on the, uh, the alternet. Internet. Yeah, the internet, yeah. So then uh, Ian said he wants to do something with this thing. Yeah. My original script along these lines of the Trillo and Suede um, uh, saga <laughs> as it's developing uh, was called The Hong Kong Canary, which was a rewriting of the Maltese Falcon using the, our characters and various puppet characters in an alternate universe of dummies intermingling with humans as co-equals or superiors, as the case may be. Frankly, this was Ian's idea, uh, and I thought it, it was a, a great idea to present the situation of the New York detective du duo in the English countryside, because you have a, a culture clash, a very interesting culture clash that way. What? From New York City? So that it, it's ripe with, with humor, uh, easily evolving from that. Lucky, so well, uh, I thought that was a great idea. But it was important to me, uh, and Ian shared this sentiment as we discussed it, uh, to, to do it in a way that doesn't go for jokes, that doesn't try consciously to, to be funny and break the reality, because we wanted the comedy to evolve from the situations and the characters, um, but that the, the situations, characters, the plot should be serious, should be presented as serious with the comedy evolving naturally, which it naturally does, it easily does, especially using puppets. I'm Fizz Marcus and I'm playing Lady Oxford. Um, I think she's fallen upon hard times. She obviously wants the house and uh, her sister, who is her elder sister, was standing in her way and she ensures that the doctor gets her out of the way. But there is Aunt Sarah up in the attic. Now, whether she actually was planning on killing Aunt Sarah, I'm not terribly sure. But uh, she thought, I think, that she could keep her locked up there and nobody would know about her. But she's definitely frightened of the puppets. They're strangers and they... Uh, unsettle her, I think, is probably. I thought I told you never to let a puppet into this house. But Lady Oxford... My name is Rufus Graham and I am Dr Frederick. He's absolutely not a wicked seducer. He's uh, possibly not a very clever man and he has been uh, trapped by a very nasty piece of work who plays upon his um, his being flattered at, uh, at getting all this attention from the owner of the big house. My name is Julian Roberts and I'm playing the part of the butler, Jive. I looked at the part and as I thought about it more I realised that this was probably going to be the most challenging part I'd ever have to play in my whole life because not only was I um, a direct descendant of the Oxford family, but I'd been reduced to being a butler for, in, in the household of a usurper. So, so that was a, a kind of a deeply complex emotional problem, but that was nothing compared with uh, having to be half a puppet. Because the only Oxford are being tainted by willow blood. No. Uh, Sam. I think this house is my heritage, uh, well, my character's heritage. And uh, the Dr. Frederick, who I'm not even related to, is going around my house killing my family. The film is based when this covenant is ending. So it's going to be a revolution of puppets or humans. And I think for Laura, as the young, you know, seed, if you like, it's up to her to, to carry on with the puppet line. So yeah, she, I think she's very passionate. And also she loves her aunt Sarah, who's stuck in the attic. Oh, I couldn't hear what you said. Why don't you just say that? Stand tall. Yeah. 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 The first time I, I, re I read the script, I thought, what on earth is this is. Uh, and the second time through, I thought, this is rather fun. And uh, the more I read it, the more I liked it, actually. I was fascinated, really. I'd never seen a script like it. I didn't know how... 
I wanted to see how, how it would work, how they would make it work. Um, I liked that the ventriloquist had actually written the whole thing. Um, I saw a clip of, of his work and he looked really good. Um, and the script was very good. Um, and then when I saw the rest of the cast, I just felt very happy, really. On a very, very basic level, I, I, I saw um, elements of, uh, uh, of of how people treat uh, black people, or using some of the references, of course, from the from the from the script itself, uh, uh, which is perhaps more appropriate for uh, for present day Great Britain, is uh, people arriving from Eastern Europe. Because then, when they, you're found in this position, it's far worse than you want to be in. Never yes. mind be found in. You know. This is my Rudolf Valentino angle. Right, that's fine. Frederick. I think the script reads well. I think it's a, a kind of nice spoof story, and uh, it works well. But I think my biggest surprise was actually seeing the puppets and seeing how they're they're being shot. Puppets have all qualities that people imbue in them. Uh, so I always, in, I guess I was attracted in the first place about being a ventriloquist in particular because of the fact that I ultimately have the control, but I can still create that illusion, the, the alter, alternate sense of reality that they are um, independent and that they are special. So I always feel they're special, even though uh, it's really me. I always love playing with the line between reality and illusion. It's a very bizarre thing. It's one of the strangest things I think I've ever done. I think it's a little bit magic. <laughs> um, do you believe in fairies? I don't know. <laughs> Something I would like to say about uh, working as an actor as, uh, with, with uh, wooden people, um, with, with dummies and puppets, is that I, I learn a lot about presentation. You know, I can pick up little hint, hints about um, how to blink or wink. <laughs> or whatever, and uh, and what is a clear way of looking somewhere, um, to, which uh, as an actor one one might uh, have a little difficulty refining these things out. It's terribly easy to watch, but um, in in the craft of somebody whose job it is to work this all out for you. This is Aunt Sarah. She's learning her lines at the moment. So if we start on that. So I gotta do a stupid accent also. What, what stupid accent? I can't talk. I can't talk in a nice, natural like I do now. I gotta say something like, yeah, "Listen to this nonsense." Hi, and Lady Sarah Willow Oxford. Do you ever hear such a mischievous? Oh, she's wonderful. She's a lot of tales to tell. Um, she. She says that doing the British accent is a strain, but actually she loves it. She feels very grand. She makes me laugh a lot. I, I, I like playing rotten characters, I really do. Um, when, I, when I play baddies normally, I try and find a kind of redeeming side. Um, but I'm not quite sure I've found one for Lady Oxford yet. I have the biggest admiration for Aunt Sarah, absolutely. Um, but Swade, you feel like he is alive. <laughs> Swade, uh, I thought, was um, a little churlish, you know. He was kind of getting at me for being a servant. You know, he's all cocky because he's a New York detective and uh, he obviously looks uh, down on me some, somewhat as being, uh, as having taken on this role as, as a servant. But what he doesn't realise is that I have plans and that I intend to take over the Oxford inheritance and be the lord of the whole estate. Between takes, <clears throat> Jonathan, who operates Swade, carries on doing the movements between takes. <laughs> and so you're discussing something with the director and you'll turn around, see how Sam feels about that and he's moving his eyes. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. and then you'll have a chat and then he'll ventriloquise even when you're not filming. So. And then when he just sits on the sofa, he's got such big eyes and they just stare. And there's something really eerie, isn't there, about 
about them. Just You feel like they're watching you always. It's like they're alive. <laughs> it's freaking me out a little bit. <laughs> I know it's difficult. Well, maybe you, you know, know here you've got uh, you've got a, obviously a good teamwork uh, between the writer and the director, and that always okay, gives good vibes to a, to a shoot. And this shoot has been fun. <laughs> Most of all, I want to have a love scene. Oh, I better yet, a couple love scenes. <laughs> a couple? Yeah, naked. <laughs>